God bless you wherever you are. And I'd love to welcome you to the year of greatness. I know for a fact that God will do wonders through you. Great things will take place in your life. And of course, you have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. That this year, God will do mighty things and great things through your life. And of course, this is our first life service in the year of greatness, 2024. My goodness, I'm already excited about it. I know that God will rearrange things for you this year. I see a lot of people are connected on YouTube. I see Wambi testimony saying Happy New Year. Uh, I see Miriam, I see Alicia, I see Mida, I see a lot of people, a lot of people are connected. I am excited. Get your Bible. As you all know, I don't have stories. Even in 2024, I'm not a storyteller. I'm a Bible preacher. I'm a word preacher. So get your Bible. Get your notepad because I'm getting ready to take you higher in the Holy Ghost. If you have your Bible, go ahead and lift it up high. You know how it goes. And say after me. If you don't have your Bible, lift up your hand. Say after me. Say, this is my Bible. I believe it contains the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life and my, life. And my, 2024, and my 2024 shall never be the same again. Shall never be the same again. Say glory, somebody. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You better be excited, brothers and sisters. Amen. You better be. You better be excited. You better be excited. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that today, God himself will set you up for greatness. This is not just another teaching that one is used to, but this is what we call a seasonal word. This is a prophetic word for you. So get your notepad, get your notebook, and take notes if you can. What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about five things you need in 2024. Amen. Not 50 things. Not 500 things. But five things. One, two, three, four, five. Ian, two, three, fifth. Fear fifth, just five. You don't need hundred. You just need what? Five. I want you to know that in your walk with God, no matter the zeal, no matter the hunger, no matter the desire, you are what you know. And it is what you know that shapes your reality. You are where you are 
because of what you know. And what you're going to know will take you to another dimension. I'm excited because this revelation will catapult you. Will energize your spirit. And 2024 will be a great year for you. Now, let's talk about the five things you need. I don't like wasting time. You know that. The first thing that you need, write this down, is God. In the year 2024, the first thing you need is God. And that is... Because men without God, men cannot. There are certain things that men in his own ability and capacity cannot handle. It will take the supernatural to back that man up. There are battles there are things in this world that unless God intervenes, you will be messed up. So God is the number one thing you need. Of course, when we are saying God, we are talking about God, the Holy Spirit himself. And that is because the Holy Spirit is the teacher. I'm about to take you deeper. Flow with me. The Holy Spirit is an advocate. King James says he is the power booster, the strengthener. He is our reminder. The Holy Spirit, according to the book of 1 John chapter 2, and you read verses 27, the Bible says we have received the anointing, the Holy Spirit, the unction, and he teaches us all things. So as a believer, in the year 2024, the number one thing you need is God. And that is because God knows your tomorrow better than anybody out there. Remember, God, according to the Bible, works in a reverse order. Let me quickly explain that. Scripture declares he created the end in the beginning. The beginning in the end. Meaning God went to the finish line and said, I'm starting. And then he went where he was supposed to start. And he said, I'm ending. Hans, Revelation says he's the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. So with that being said, it means God has been into tomorrow. You are trying to get to tomorrow, God has been into tomorrow. You are trying to get to the month of February. God has been in the month of February. You are trying to get to the month of March. God has been in the month of March. So your next month, your next week, your tomorrow is nothing but a memory unto God. So you walking with him and you being with him, it means the future cannot take you by surprise. Because God speaks. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And through his Holy Spirit, he will reveal to you what is what. You might not get it 100%, but most of the things will be revealed to you. Say glory, somebody. So the number one thing you need is God. Lean not or trust not your own understanding, your own thinking but trust God. So this year, make it a point. Make it your lifestyle. Make it the number one important thing to trust God. Doubt all men, but don't doubt God. Don't doubt God and believe men. Does that make sense? Glory be to God. I want to go deeper, but I feel like I'm on my own. 
I know I've not been live. The last time I was live was, I will tell you now, the 5th, if I'm not mistaken, between the 5th and the 6th of December. Now is the 3rd of January. I hope you are here. I hope you are here, people. Now I'm taking you deeper so that I can take you higher. The number two or second thing you need is destiny helpers. Write that one down. Here I think I'm going to go deeper and terrorize here. I'm going to terrorize ignorance here. I'm going to confront ignorance here. So the second thing you need is destiny help us. Number one, God. Number two, destiny help us. Why destiny help us? That is because God is a spirit. Because one will say, but Apostle, you said the number one thing I need is God. So if I have God, God is with me and I believe in God. Why do I need men? So I have to explain. God is a spirit. According to the book of John 4. And we know that it is illegal for spirits to come into our territory without a body. What that means is every time, or rather whenever God will want to help men, God will use men to help men. Remember, he is a spirit. He cannot come down without a body. So the body he will use is called man. That's why Jesus was called son of man. Yet we know he was the son of God. Jesus, in the book of Hebrews, says, a body you have prepared for me. And that is because he is a spirit. So God without men, God will not. Remember when we started, we said, Men without God, the number one thing you need is God. Men without God, men cannot. Number two, God without men, God will not. Meaning every time, whenever God will want to help you, God will use men. Are you here, somebody? Amen. Are you here, somebody? Amen. So it is very important for some of you to understand that revelation. Because I've seen a lot of people waiting on God, yet God had already released the answer. Mm -hmm. They are praying, yet the answer had already left God's hand. The answer is a man. There is nothing in the realm of men that God will do without men. You know, I've had people, especially spiritual bastards, Right? Spiritual bastards are people who have no father, no mentor, no guide, and nobody to rebuke them or to correct them. They just want, to, they, they think, you know, they need no men. So those people are spiritual bastards. It's scriptural. I'm not trying to uh, mess anybody up here. It's, it's scriptural. The Bible says, he who is without rebuke is a bastard. So it's in the Bible, right? Now, you find spiritual bastards saying things like, I don't need no man. I need God. <laughs> as long as I have my Bible in my own house and God, I'm done. That is ignorance speaking. The Bible you are holding, man printed it. And beside that, the Bible you are reading, man wrote it. Of course, inspired. I'm a student of the scripture. I understand that. That's why in the Bible, you will never find the book of God. I've done Genesis to Revelation, Revelation to Genesis, but there is no book called the book of God. In the Apocrypha, you will not even find the book of God. In the lost book, books and removed books of the Bible, which you can find in the Geneva Bible. In the Ethiopian Bible, Timothy or Cole Paul wrote it. Rather, Paul was talking to Timothy. You will say the book of John, because John was a man who wrote the book of John. 
You say the book of Revelation. We all know John wrote the book of Revelation while he was in the island of Patmos. It all comes down to men. Somebody shout men. Men. I will give another example. The day you were born, men handled you. When I say men handled you, I'm saying people. You landed and somebody handled you. And somebody bathed you. The day you die, men will handle you. Why? Because in the realm of men, God will never do anything without a man. As a matter of fact, in the realm of men, men is so important that there is no deity. There is no deity. I'll say it for the last time. There is no deity, meaning there is no God that men can worship without another man introducing that man to a God. Meaning you know God today because men introduced you to God. (laughs) Even the dimensions of God that you are going to know, it will take men to introduce you to those dimensions of God. Because for you to know God from the first place, it took men. What makes you think at this point in time in your life, you need no men? In the entire Bible, from the patriarchs, we see destiny help us. When you read the Bible, you realize, and this is my favorite one, and those that have been following me, you realize that Apostle really loves this one, right? And that is because revelation is progressive, truth is eternal. So it does not change. Hallelujah. There is a man called David. Jesus comes. He's called the seed of David. David had a father, Jesse, right? Jesse had sons. We know all of them, right? Three sons. Praise the Lord, everybody. David is anointed. He was not anointed by anybody, by a person, a man called Samuel. Samuel. But how was Samuel born? God used a man called Eli when the mother was barren called Hannah. Are you you with me? Now David kills Goliath. Pay attention now. Pay attention now. But before he kills Goliath, he's anointed. What was he anointed for? To be king. Or to become a king. Meaning, David had a kingship anointing. Say glory, somebody. I feel it. He had a kingship anointing. But what was David's occupation when he received the anointment? He was a sheep boy. Why is this now? Why is this now? God anointed him through a prophet. But God did not teach him how to operate like a king. You can have a prophetic anointing and the revelation of how to move in that prophetic anointing, God can lock it in a man. You are not hearing. No, no, no. You are not hearing me. David is anointed. When he walks around, He has the anointment. But Samuel who anointed him did not teach him how to operate like a king because Samuel was not a king. He was a prophet. If probably David was anointed to be a prophet, Samuel would have taken him through a prophetic school. As a matter of fact, Samuel had a school and a band of prophets. But because this guy was a king, he anoints him, he leaves him. But guess what? When he kills or after he kills Goliath, then your Bible says, and Jonathan. But who is Jonathan? The son of the king. Who was the king at that moment? Saul. So David is anointed to become king. But I want you to understand that David does not know how to walk like a king. He does not know how to talk like a king. He has the anointment. But what will delay his appointment is his ability to operate like a king. <laughs> you can have the anointment and never move in that operation because you yourself are not ready to move in it. You have no knowledge as to how you can move in it. 
And that is where a lot, lot of believers are missing it. That's why there are people right now at the age of 55, at the age of 75, at the age of 45, they know they have a calling. They know they have a gift. They know they have an anointment. They know they are not crazy. It's something, there's something special about them. But every time they look for that thing, they can't locate it. So the distance between them and locating that which is in them is a person. Uh, because God will put it out there and men will reveal it. Uh, I feel I'm on my own. Uh, I don't know if you are ready for 2024. I don't know if you are ready for 2024. So now when David brought down Goliath, says the scripture, then came Jonathan the son of Saul. What did he do? The Bible then says he gave him his own robe and his own sword. And they were in a covenant. And the love of Jonathan to David and the love of David to Jonathan was a love of a man and a woman. It was as if a man loved a woman and they were one in spirit. Another vision says they were one in soul. Do you think that was a coincidence? No. Do you think that was a mistake? No. He is to inherit a kingdom, but he does not have keys to that kingdom. Keys here, we're not talking about physical keys. We're talking about knowledge. There are people who cannot inherit what they are born to inherit because they lack knowledge, understanding. Are you hearing me? Amen. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. So when Jonathan came, it was God positioning a destiny helper for David. And that is because Jonathan already, he was what? A prince. Meaning he was taught how to behave like a king. He was taught how to talk like a king. He understood what it means to have a kingdom. Are you hearing me? He was taught that when you run a kingdom, it is not so much about what you can get out of your people. It is so much about what you can give to your people. And David, being a sheep boy, did not know that. David, all he knew was to protect that which he loved. But to talk and to address like a king, he did not have that. It took Jonathan, a son of a king. As long as you are a child of destiny, God will bring destiny helpers. And because you are a child of destiny, God will bring destiny helpers. Yes, also the devil will bring destiny disturbers. Because when one is favored by God, one is also favored by the devil. That's why you should never conclude on a man's case based on what people are saying about that man. Because if nobody is saying anything about you or about a man, that man has not really made moves. Ah, you didn't hear what I'm saying. Ah, and the devil has a tendency. Christians, if you can know this, you're gone. The devil has a tendency of not touching his own. He goes to the ones that belongs to God and says, these ones are mine. And uh, he finds people who he's going to use to spread that and when that is all over because you have no revelation you are a christian with no holy spirit you have no discernment you have no word in you you are not even prophetic you then start moving by information not by revelation you turn your back on a man that was supposed to unlock you and you find yourself wandering everywhere but nowhere why because information took you out so it is important for you to understand how God works and how also the enemy works. God will bring destiny helpers and the enemy will bring destiny disturbers. Are you hearing me? You have not really followed Apostle Mies or your men of God, whoever you follow, your women of God, until you hear something about them and it does not move you. Jesus, you know, it's scriptural, it's scriptural. Jesus himself, right? The Bible says, and he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, and they left. And before that, remember, in the book of Matthew chapter 12, they were saying that he is using Beelzebub. 
right? He's using, uh, you know, he's, he's demonic, so to say. That's what they said about Jesus. You, the moment they say something like that about a preacher or about a friend of yours who's prophetic, the next thing you're like, ah, ah, ah. You see, instead of hearing what God is saying about that person, you are nowhere to be found. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Even to Jesus, it happened. And Jesus looked at the other disciples and said, everybody has left. Why are you still here? Go. And Peter looked at him and said, where can we go? Because only you have the words of life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it was those that when the Holy Spirit came, rested upon. I don't know about those who left. Don't ask me. Are you hearing me? So it is very important for you to be prophetic, not pathetic, especially in these days. days. The days are dark, brothers and sisters. The days are evil. Hallelujah. You cannot risk your faith in God by following a man who does not feed you the word, pointing you to Christ, pointing you to Jesus, or just following anything because crowd is following that thing. This is a time where you need discernment, you need understanding, where you yourself, you will feel, you know what, God, you are doing something new in me through, you know, the ministration of this woman of God, the ministration of this man of God. Are you hearing? Because it's personal. Say, say destiny help us. So the second thing you need is what? Destiny help us. The second thing you need is what? Say with me, destiny help us. So always remember that when it comes to God, God will always use men. So you need discernment to know who sent who. Because whenever God wants to take you from one level to another, he will send a man. Also, when the enemy wants to stop you from going somewhere, he will send a man. So you need the prophetic and discernment to know who sent who. Does that make sense? Amen. Delilah looked like a destiny helper, but she was a destiny destroyer. So it is very important for you to know by the Spirit of God who sent who. Example, any relationship that is pulling you away from the presence of God, it is not from God, it is a destruction. That is the number one thing that you should use to measure. If this, that, that should be your measuring stick as a child of God. Is this from God? spiritually where am i now after i met this individual after i connected to this individual of course if it's business it's a different story praise the lord if it's business it's not supposed to exhaust you it's supposed to exalt you then you will definitely know if you are an apostle to continue wave your hand because this issue of destiny help us I, I, I feel like dealing with somebody right now can I deal with two people Amen. there are two people here with pride let's deal with that Amen. some are you the reason why you see you have been the way you are I'm talking about moving in cycles is because you have a nasty attitude you don't value people you don't respect people you don't care about people. You don't love people. Hence the Bible then says, many have mishandled angels unaway. Others refuse to entertain angels unaway. That scripture, every time I read it, it is as if my spirit wants to jump out of my body. Because here, the Bible is clearly telling you that there are angels with, with no wings. Because I mean, if... These angels had wings. I mean, you would have entertained them. But you mishandled them, not knowing they were angels. Aye. You see, there are relationships that are worth fighting for. You hear people who don't really know what is what and how God works, saying, ah, nothing is, no, no one is irreplaceable. There are people who you can't replace. <laughs> that as soon as you cut ties, Listen to me. You stop being relevant. And that is because you came under their light and you thought it was yours. Sometimes when you are under an umbrella, you don't know how hot the sun is until you come out. Sometimes when you are under the shade, you don't know how hot it is until you cut the tree. I have seen destinies being rewritten, not by God by the enemy, by blinding somebody when it comes to the mystery of destiny helpers. If you don't believe me, ask 
a woman called Ophrah. She followed Ruth and Naomi. Of course, Naomi was the mother-in-law. Ruth was a sister-in-law because they were both married to the sons of Naomi. As Naomi went back to Bethlehem, she had nothing. Her life was not making sense. But guess what? For them to be married from the first place, it was because of Naomi, because Naomi had children. So Ruth had a revelation and followed. And she turned Naomi and she looked at Ruth and Ophrah and she said, why are you following me? I have nothing to give you. I'm bitter myself. Even if I was to give birth, will you wait for my children now to grow up for you to marry them? Go back to your people. You are Moabites. I'm an Israelite. Listen to what Ruth said. Ruth said, your God shall be my God. Where you go, I go. Where they bury you, they bury me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. She understood that there was something about this woman. Though there was really nothing tangible. But spiritually she had picked up a signal. And you look at Ophrah. She looked at uh, Naomi from head to toe. She realized that this woman can help me physically. <laughs> and you know what she said? I'm turning. I'm going to my people. Right after she turned, we have never read about her in the Bible. Meaning we were reading about her from the first place because she was connected to somebody relevant. Do you think we are going to read about Lot if there was no Abraham? You know, there are people who are failing to realize that it is not about them. But if them, they connect to somebody who's, ab who, who's about, where it is about them, they themselves become relevant. I wish you could hear me. So the mystery there is to understand. That's why a lot of great people don't want to come down to people's levels. Because once they come down to people's levels, people start feeling like they had went up to the level of the great man. Yet it's the great man who came down to your level. That's why people who are great are scarce. And they tell you scarcity is their code. They are scarce because when you meet them, you mishandle them. You meet somebody who has built so much in life, the first thing you ask him for the first thing you ask is five dollars. Are you mad? Don't you know that the person can give you knowledge that can give you five hundred thousand dollars in the next ninety days? Some of you you don't know how to treat and to handle destiny helpers. You meet a prophet, prophet. I want what is in you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's not talk about that. Say destiny help us. Destiny help us. Say destiny help us. Destiny help us. Are we continuing? Amen. Now, the number, th we're, not, we're going to number three now. The third thing you need in 2024, please write this down because this will mess you up. Wisdom. Wisdom. Let's go. Wisdom. Remember, number one is God. We explained that. Number two, destiny help us. Number three, wisdom. I'm getting ready to close. Wisdom. The Bible then tells us that wisdom is a principal thing. Wisdom is what? A principal, a principal thing. But listen to what the wisest man said. He then says, but in all thy getting, get understanding. <laughs> it does not, Aneli said something that was going to sound offensive and thank God I didn't say it. Because 80% were going to really understand what I'm saying. 20% who are still growing in the Lord we're really going to be disturbed by it. So thank God it did not come out. Hmm. Thank God it didn't. When you read the Bible, you realize that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not only grow spiritually. You see, I've seen a lot of Christians who are more concerned or who are only concerned about their spiritual growth. Where you literally hear somebody pray 
for spiritual growth. Please be careful there so that we don't switch off anything there. I've seen a lot of people pray for spiritual growth, and I want to correct that error once and for all today by the Spirit of God. You can't pray out spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is something that you yourself, you have to go after. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You don't pray for it and it comes to you. You go after spiritual growth. It's like going to the gym and you start looking at whatever is in the gym and you start saying, I'm fit. No, go and lift. Spiritual growth is like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't know something because you want to know it out of nowhere. Even the law of cause and effect will fight you. I'll give an example so you understand. You see that people disrespect God and the things of God to pray for spiritual growth. Why didn't you pray for the knowledge you went to school for to come to you when you were at home? Why did you have to go to school? Because you could have prayed for that knowledge to come to you. But you went to school and you sat down and you learned. Uh, did you hear what I just said? Amen. You find then Christians say, if it is mine, it's mine. If God wants it, Education you knew it was yours, but you went to get it. Why didn't you sit at home and say, if education is meant for me, education will come to me? You see your hypocrisy. That's being hypocritical. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uncle KB, let me tell you something, and everybody under the influence of my voice. Amen. It is important for us to understand that Jesus did not only grow spiritually. He grew in wisdom, says the Bible. I had a problem as a young preacher. I said, if Jesus grew in wisdom, who am I? If the Lord of history, the king of the ages, the creator of the universe, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who will forever be, unmoved, unchanged, and dismayed, and undefeated will grow in wisdom who am I not to grow in wisdom because the Bible says he grew in wisdom in stature in favor with God and men you see when we talk about destiny help us God and men that's why the first thing you need is God the second thing you need is destiny help us then you need wisdom I'm not teaching you things that are not biblical now I'm teaching you things that are what Biblical. So you need wisdom. Wisdom, you can pray for it. Aha, uh -huh. that's where I was going. But you can't pray for spiritual growth. Of course, there are different types of wisdom. But you can pray for wisdom. You can ask for wisdom. We see it first in the Old Testament. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 15, Solomon asked for wisdom. God said, ask anything. My man said wisdom. God said, because you did not ask for the death of your enemies, but you asked a good thing, I will give you wisdom and I will give you riches. Right? And the man woke up. He was the wisest man. Came back, wrote Proverbs, Songs of Solomon, or Songs of Songs. Then he said, you know what, Basel, Ecclesiastes, they will finish you. Because when he writes Ecclesiastes, is when now he had returned back to God. Remember, Solomon worshipped God. His wisdom misled him. He started worshipping idols and came back to God and began to write. Hence, when he writes, I came back and I saw under the sun. Are you with me? Amen. I think I'm talking to, uh, who's that? Nelisa Zondi. I think only Nelisa Zondi is here today. This one says, I'm shocked. How do you know all these things? I've been reading the Bible for 13 years. <coughs> okay, let me not answer that one. Anyway, let's go forward, right? Let's focus. Let's go forward. It is important that you understand that wisdom you can pray for. Scripture, another scripture, James 1.5. It says, let ye who lacks wisdom ask God for wisdom. And God who is just will give him wisdom. So wisdom is something you can ask God for. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. But understanding is something that you get. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Understanding, you can get it. Understanding can be given. Mm. Let me explain that because I want to go deeper. Okay, let's just, you know, finish it because I, f I feel my people here, they're like, no, Apostle, we already know that one. Don't go there. So, okay, let's finish it. Wisdom is application. Whenever we are talking wisdom, we are talking the ability to design. You see, where wisdom is, people's lives are structured, not punctured. Wisdom is the ability to point out differences. Hmm, I wish I could talk about wisdom. Ah. Mm. Wisdom is the ability to execute. Wisdom is to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, who to do it with. Hence we say wisdom is application. While is understanding is comprehension. But you cannot talk about wisdom and understanding and not talk about knowledge. Because knowledge, understanding, and wisdom are three brothers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Of course, wisdom is also personified and it's called hair. But in this case, let's say wisdom is him because Jesus is called the wisdom of God anyway. Are you with me? So, knowledge is information. Understanding is comprehension. Wisdom is application, meaning I receive the information. I comprehend it, meaning I understand it. I apply it, meaning to apply that which I know. It takes wisdom. The fact that I'm not able to apply it, I've not gotten wisdom. Okay, I'll say it again. It is not difficult to hear something. Are you hearing? It is not difficult to comprehend something. But it will take wisdom for you to put that which is in you to use. That's why every gift of the spirit needs wisdom. No one can function in the spiritual gifts without wisdom. Because it takes wisdom for you to know how to use even your gift. Oh my God. Oh, Lord, I wish I could talk to you guys. I wish I could talk to you. I don't want to talk about what wisdom is because if I start talking about wisdom, I'll go to Phronesis. I'll go to Sophia. I'll, I'll go to uh, 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 so many things. There is, a, there is a type of wisdom in the Bible. It's called in crypto. I know most of us were used to Sophia. In crypto. I feel like I can go there. <laughs> Uh, guys, why are we not talking about wisdom? Uh, I wish brothers and sisters were talking about wisdom. Anyway, I'm just passing by. Ah, I, feel, I, feel, I feel the anointing. I feel the fire of God. I feel, I feel the fire of God. Hallelujah. So you need wisdom. Because it is wisdom that will help you know what to do this year. Right? It is wisdom that is going to help you know how to do what you want to do. Because it's one thing to know what to do. But it's another thing for you to know how. A lot of people have so many things to do. But they don't know how to do it. It takes wisdom to answer that how. But how sometimes is not a problem. You can know how. But here's now the mystery. Because there's one thing that qualifies manifestations. Time. It will also take wisdom for you to know when. You can have the idea, know exactly what to do, but it will take wisdom for you to know this is the right moment to move. Because when it comes to God, there is a chronos and there is a kairos. You can have a brilliant idea, you can have whatever you want to do. If you do it in the wrong time, in the wrong season, it will not yield results. And you will start thinking you did something wrong, yet the timing was wrong. I will give an example. You start selling... Uh, vests. I don't know if you guys know what vest is, right? 
but vests, you know, like short sleeve. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you say things and you think people understand how you guys this side describe things. Vests, like vests, and shorts. We, you, we are entering winter. You can see that it's starting to change. The season is changing. And you start selling vests. Are you, are you okay? Yet, if you were to sell those vests and those shorts, right, around summer, you'll have made a profit. So you have a right thing, product. You know what to do. But the when now is what's fighting you. So there are people who will say, I'm ready for a relationship. I know the type of man I want. But when will fight them? Uh, uh, let me talk to YouTube. YouTube, if you are here, please put fire emojis because I feel Zoom, they are still shocked that I'm here. They have not seen me in almost, it's been a month now. So they are like, is it, is it, is it really him? It's me, God's people. <laughs> yes, sir. The number four thing you need, this one, please pay attention like you have never paid attention before. Right. The number four thing you need in the year 2024, you need to build a prayer altar. I'll say that again. You need to build a prayer altar. So the number four thing you need is prayer altar. Is a prayer altar. Is it clear? We all know what prayer is. We all know what altars are. If you have been following Apostle Mies and you have been following the teachings of Apostle, I know you know. But for the sake of those who don't know, let's quickly break it down, but I will not dwell much in it because we have done so many teachings when it comes to these ones. When we are talking about prayer altars, we are not talking about, you know, you uh, bringing stones. Some of you, you know, you have no ro enough room Already you are bringing stones. You, it doesn't make sense, isn't it? So altars in the olden days were monuments, were institutions, were even places. Even people were altars. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But for you to kind of understand what I mean, because I think it's important for me to explain this to you. Otherwise, we'll have people building funny things in their homes and having 100 candles and, you know, all sorts of red cloth, yellow cloth, blue cloth. Listen, let me correct myself. There. If there is a man of God telling you to do that, I'm not saying they are wrong. Because I'm just talking. You find out that somebody's listening to me. They were told to do that yesterday by their pastor. And now I'm coming to say this. I'm just saying that, you know, altars are more than that. You know, you know what I mean. So I'm not trying to uh, attack anybody here. So get me right. You can you can build an altar. Okay, this is the easy or easiest way to build an altar. Say, so talk to me, Apostle. You find a place in your own house or wherever you stay. And you dedicate that place. In you dedicating that place, you then say, this is where I will come and encounter God. The moment that is released, that place becomes an altar. Why? Because an altar is a what? Is an intersection between humanity and divinity. It's where divinity meets what? Humanity. Yes, sir. An altar is a spiritual airport where spirits what? Land and spirits take off. An altar is a place where destinies are decided. An altar is a place where destinies are altered. That's why they, they always say, if you are not altering your life by your altar, somebody is altering your life by their altar. It then becomes a battle of altars. Ah, me, don't, don't, don't tell me any. Listen, I know there's somebody sitting in their couches like this. Ah, these preachers are talking about prayer. They love prayer, these ones. Leave us alone. That's the first thing. And if you are downplaying the mystery of prayer and altars, you will die like a chicken. 
There are certain things that will happen you will not know where it went wrong. You will patch everywhere, but rain will still be coming in. And you'll be like, what's happening? You have missed the number one important thing, an altar. And if you are still wondering, is it biblical? Altars are not just biblical, are fundamental. Because a teaching to be biblical and fundamental and to divest the whole Bible, it has to start by and with Abraham. Altars are so important. Say, talk to me, Apostle. Altars are so important that we see our father, Abraham, that when God called him, the first thing that he did was to build an altar. Have you not wondered why the patriarchs, right, Every time they had God or God entered into a covenant with them, the first thing they did, no matter the matter, was to build an altar. Everywhere Abraham went, somebody that, some people, they don't know their Bible. In Genesis chapter 12, you read from verse 1, God is speaking to him. As soon as he came out of his father's house, the first thing he did was to build an altar by the east side of Bethel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We see every time he was doing something, he built an altar before he built his own house. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Too many people will want to build their houses, buy cars. Of course, that's brilliant if that's what you want. But the patriarchs understood something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Understood that you have to build your prayer altar first before anything. Because they will still need to be maintained by prayer. It does not matter what you build afterwards. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Say, I hear, you, I hear you, Apostle. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Brothers and sisters, life is spiritual. That's why I was talking to another mentee of mine. And I was like to him, anytime you sense a demonic presence in your room, especially at night, it is not a time for you to go to sleep. If you go to sleep, or rather the moment you go to sleep, do you know that a 10 years can be hijacked in that five seconds of you feeling a demonic presence? He said, Apostle, what are you saying? I said, life is spiritual before it's physical. <laughs> ah, ah. Have you not wondered why what we bind on earth is also needs to be bound in heaven? Because as long as it's not bound in heaven, it will not last here. We can lose it all we want here. As long as it's not loosed in heaven, it will never manifest. Because things that do appear come from that which does not appear. Amen. Write down there in the comment section before you sleep, some of you, and say, life is spiritual. Write it and say, in the comment section, if you can call. Of course, some of you are watching on TV, so you can comment. But just say it out loud. Those who are driving, just say it out loud. But if you are seated and you are on your computer, your phone, or whatever, just go, life is spiritual. And 2024 has to be personal, brothers and sisters. Because there's never be a t been a time where, you know, demons are at work than when a year ends and a year begins. Are we together? Because every time when the enemy wants to stop a child of destiny, he starts attacking that person in the beginning. Even Jesus himself, as great as he was, before he began his ministry, boom, here comes the devil. Anyway, so you have written, I see a lot of people saying life is spiritual. Yes, life is indeed spiritual. Is what? Indeed spiritual. So it is important for you to have a prayer altar. You, you hear people say, altars this side, altars this. And you think they are joking. No, they are not. They are not. They are not. So you choose a place, wherever you stay in your house or even at your workplace, and say every time during lunch I'll come here and I'll pray here. Or at your house... Before I go to sleep, I'll come here in this po position. It doesn't mean that you won't pray anyway, but that's your altar now. You know when I'm here, I, I mean business. 
and you begin to, uh, 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 you know, uh, kabash and, and, and kava, you wait and you tarry in the presence of God. And until you are strengthened, you don't leave that place. Sometimes you just need to go there, not because you have a prayer request, but you are just going there to build capacity. And you just go like this. You just go. And you yourself, you don't understand, but you are actually speaking mysteries. You are encoding and decoding. You are redirecting destinies. You are praying for your children that are not yet born. Without you knowing that at that moment, you are actually praying for your child who will be in grade 4 in 20 years from now because you have no child now. But already in that grade 4, the daughter of a witch will not overthrow your child. Don't, don't joke with prayer. Prayer is the only thing. What I'm saying is biblical. Pray, I will never teach you things that are not biblical. Prayer is the only thing that can go to the future and wait for you. Amen. You can bank prayer and withdraw prayer. Even Jesus in John 17 said, I pray for them. Who will believe in my name? Another vision says, who will yet believe in my name? <laughs> they have not yet believed, but they have been prayed for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer is so important that even Jesus, who is seated right now by the right hand of the Father, he's interceding for us. The Holy Spirit himself, when we are feeling weak in our infirmities, he does not keep quiet and say, ah, you gain strength next week. He takes over, meaning it shows you that that small gap can set you back a generation. That's why it is important by the Spirit of God to understand prayer altars. So the number four thing you need is to build a prayer altar. Say with me, prayer altar. Prayer altar. You see, whenever we are talking about prayer, a lot of people don't understand that they can be the generational curse breaker of their family. The reason why, what I'm about to say, I know you have not heard it anyway, but I'm saying this with humility, but please, just because you have never heard it anyway, it does not mean you should just take it for granted. So this is serious. The reason why a curse was able to stand for so long in your generation, in your family, is because there was no one to pray. I know you are saying my grandmother was praying. Please, you don't want me to go there. Because you can pray and pray amiss. Okay. 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 What I'm about to say is so powerful. Please hear me and hear me in the Holy Ghost. Every territory that has been taken by demons is because men failed to pray. Am I making sense? Amen. Am I making sense? So you can be the generational curse breaker of your what? Of your generation. Understand what prayer can do. You, prayer is a perpetuator. It can fuel somebody's life, somebody's destiny, somebody's journey. Somebody's walk with God. Why did our Lord and Savior Jesus himself pray for hours and come out and he will move in dimensions in a strange way? Every time Jesus will perform a miracle and the next thing it will be as if he's going to bank prayer so that he can perform another miracle. I mean, he multiplied the bread. This is the time for him to say, God, indeed, you are with me. When everybody was thanking him and the disciples and the Bible says he told the disciples to send the people away. And when they had sent the people away, he then said, go ahead as I go and pray. I said, wait a minute. Jesus, this is the time where Peter has to come and shake your hand and say, master, you are too much. This is the time where Bartholomew has to come and say, ah, there is no other prophet like you on earth. This is the time where Matthew has to come and say, I've been everywhere. But Jesus... Ah, you are the real deal. But instead of Jesus waiting for compliments, he says, you go, I go and pray. 
Why will Jesus go for prayer? After performing such a miracle, feeding 5,000 women. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, 5,000 men, sorry. 5,000 men, excluding women and children. We know that when it comes to crusades, even today here, we have thousands of people, majority is women. And that is because women are spiritually sensitive. That's why you see them at church. There is nothing spiritual on this earth like a woman. Because a woman has what a man does not have, and that is a womb. Amen. A womb is what gives a woman an advantage when it comes to spiritual matters. Amen. And that is because wombs are portals. Oh, yes. Wombs are doorways between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. That's why God said, I knew you, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb. Not while you were in your father's loins. No, womb. Because for me to bring you here, I have to partner with your mother. That's why when the Holy Spirit comes down, the first people to feel the Holy Spirit are women. Oh, yeah. uh -uh. <laughs> Look at how angry some people are. Say, eh? <laughs> you. Hey, let me not go deeper. I'm not here to talk about women. Women are so powerful oh, yeah. that the enemy is so intimidated by women. That's why some men, <laughs> all they need is a right woman. I'm telling you, there are men who are directionless and they encountered one woman, a prayerful woman. That's why if you're, a, if you're a man, don't just have a partner that you play with. Have a partner you pray with. Amen. Once the prayers of your woman go ahead of you, you yourself, you'll be unstoppable. That's why I always tell men, be careful how you treat a prayerful woman. Don't play with a prayerful woman. You'll be surprised that her prayers were the ones keeping you on top. That the moment she stops praying for you, you will fall like a lightning. When God said, touch ye not my anointed, I know he was talking to all of us, about all of us, but I believe he was talking more about the women. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Amen. Ah, Come on, read your Bible correctly. Me, I've read it. Are you hearing me? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't try to mess a woman who's praying for you, who's faithful to you. And you yourself, you find yourself with something that does not pray, does not love God. You don't even know what you're withdrawing from that woman. Life is spiritual. Don't joke. Don't joke. You sometimes need to look at yourself and say, Mwa, 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 I'm an embassy of God. Mwa. I cannot be found everywhere. I cannot be seen everywhere. I'm an embassy. I move with angels. Angels are witnessing everything I do. Are you hearing me? Oh, the church is quiet. Ah, I thought the church would say hallelujah here, but the church is quiet. So, you can be a generational curse breaker. And it is important for you to hear this. The reason why a curse, that's why Proverbs declares that a curse cannot stand without a cause. That was powerful, man. It's in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs. There must be a cause for a curse to stand. And it means, if there must be a cause, it means one can break it. One can replace it. One can change it. Glory. But it takes somebody who understands prayer. Prayer. I, what I'm about to say here. Prayer is not for information. But it is for your formation. Many people think when they pray. They are informing God. God already knows brothers and sisters. He said before you call. I shall answer you. So you can inform God. Prayer is for your own formation. When I pray, Mempesi, Sikosana, I am formed. That's why Jesus in the mountain of transfiguration, the Bible says, while is he prayed, and he was praying, he was transfigured in front of his disciples. I said, wait a minute. Why were Peter, John, James not transfigured? 
answer was there. They were watching him pray. <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> Peter started to be active when he saw Moses and he saw the prophet Elijah. He said, Master, I think we should build three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. My man focused on the tree and forgot himself. That's when he started talking. And while this is busy, a cloud came down and a voice spoke. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. They all fell down. They did not hear what Moses and uh, Elijah were sharing and telling Jesus. Otherwise, if they had, we'll be reading about it. One will say, probably they removed it in our Bible. Oh, no, no, no. I've looked, it, I've looked for it in the Geneva. I've looked at it in the Ethiopia. I've read the Apocrypha. It's not there. Please, don't try to read other Bibles if you have not finished the one that you are using. You hear people saying, ah, tomorrow I'm going for the book of Maccabees. You have not read the book of uh, Philemon. What is wrong with you? Even God will be shocked. Because the books in the Bibles are the ones that are inspired. Of course, if we were to go deeper, there are certain books that are removed in the Bible. Not because they were not inspired. Because they were challenging how kings treated people. And if they were to include them in the Bible... Kings will not have power over people. They will not have, be able to control people. So the quickest way was to remove certain books in the Bible. Especially King James himself. Anything that challenged him took it out of the Bible. That's why when you read uh, Ephesians 6 verses 12, that says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, right? Powers. Before it says rulers of darkness, the original Bible says evil rulers in government <laughs> then he had to remove that and say uh uh this is a uh, principalities and spiritual wickedness remove that part are you hearing what i'm saying because they knew how they knew that people were not happy with them so many so many books are removed even the book of Enoch because the book of Jude quotes it. The book of Hebrews talks about Enoch. Jude quotes Jude literally quotes the book of Enoch. Take a portion from the book, but when you look for the book, it's not in your Bible. Why? Because Enoch's book is full of things that you yourself you'll be like, ah, I'm a spirit man. I'm a spirit being with earthly experience. I'm not an earthly being with spiritual experience. It teaches you some few things. You you begin to ascend. You know that when you are sleeping, dreams is not you having <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> you know, science, I call it, some things, ah, nah, ah, nah. You know, please, I'm not saying go and read the book of Enoch if you have not read the book of Titus, Jude, ah, you are stubborn. You have not even finished Jude. Jude, you can literally finish that book in five minutes. And you'll be proud that you have finished one book in 2024, at least. Ah, you. I see, in fact, I see Jude. Jude is too far. The book of Third John. Ah. Anyway, so we move forward. God bless everybody that is giving. We move forward, right? The number five thing. We get to number five now. And I'm wrapping it up. I know everybody was waiting for this one. But I know you guys are not in a hurry because you are being blessed and the word of God is transforming your lives. Amen. The number five or number fifth, the, the fifth thing, number five, the fifth thing, right? Uh, in Africans, is it, if, if, well, what did we say? Faith. So, Ian, two, three, four, faith. Says seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't look at me and think I can't speak Africans. I'm the real, I'm the real Dutch. <laughs> ah, I'm telling you. Anyway, let's move forward. The fifth thing here that you need in 2024 is a mentor or a spiritual father. Amen. Some of you, you call it a spiritual guider or spiritual instructor. I know there are people who are like, why do I need a spiritual 
We have not read scriptures today I've, I've been quoting. Just put it in right in front of their face, right in front of their face, because you know there are people who argue without reading the Bible. Put it there. I'm sure you know it. I don't have to tell you. Put 1 Corinthians 4, 4 verse 15 quickly, please. And say, but Jesus said we must not call any man father on the earth. Uh, a, 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 we have one father who's in heaven. The same Jesus went and say, what kind of a father will give his son a snake while his father is asking for a fish? And the Bible says, honor your father. And the Bible says, don't call a man father except heavenly father. Come on now, can't you see that? Already here, it's as if scripture is contradicting scripture. Scripture does not contradict scripture. Scripture interprets scripture. Yeah. So it's very important for you to then check the original translation. Because we have so many words in the Bible that spell the same, sound the same, but they don't mean the same thing. Example, the word power. We see it repeated, appearing many times in the Bible. But it does not mean the same thing. Example, you have Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Right? The word power there is a Greek word dunamis, meaning dynamite. Right? That is the, uh, you know, explosives, dynamites. You know those explosives. That, that they use them in mines. They use them to construct and to demolish. So this power gives you the ability to construct and to demolish. That's why for them to preach, they had to receive dunamis. But listen to what Jesus in Matthew 10 says. The Bible says, and he called unto him 12 of his disciples, and he gave them what? Power. Same word. Spells the same. Sounds the same, but means a different thing. The other one means dynamite. But the other one is not dynamite now. It's craters, which means authority. We have power as iscus. Are you hearing me? We have power as exousia. I don't know if the people are here. Let me not go there, but I'm trying to explain. Now I'll end up teaching things that I'm not talking about. Is it on the screen, sir? All right, let's quickly. So it's very important that when you read that, and the easiest way to get to know the translation, maybe the original translation, it is not to go and read it Aramaic or go read it in Greek and then you go, because people are like, Jesus spoke Aramaic. So, or read it in Hebrew, no. Just go to literal standard vision. Just like that, it will give you exactly, or contemporary. Are, we, are, are you hearing me? Amen. What scripture did I say we're reading? I'm in the Old Testament. Now I'm looking for the book of Samuel. Thank you. I'm there already. Ah, this one. This one will paralyze spiritual babies. No, no. People are stubborn. For thou ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ. Another vision says guardians or mentors. Yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I, I have begotten you through the gospel. Another vision says, in Christ Jesus, I am your father. I don't want to talk about this. I've dealt with this so many times. So I, wanna, I don't want to interpret it. I've interpreted it so many times. So, in 2024, 20, you need a mentor. You need a mentor if God opens your eyes and blesses you with a spiritual father, you need a spiritual father. But in your pursuit of God, in, your, in you being after God, don't let a man replace God. You know you have a problem when your spiritual father has become your final destination. You know something is wrong when your spiritual father points you to himself. Are you hearing me? You are in danger. You see what Paul said? He, he was clear and he said it. He said, imitate me. The word imitate, ah, yeah, you see now I'm preaching, is the word mamito. Are you hearing me? Ah, yeah. Imitate us mamitos. So he says, he says, he says imitate me. As I imitate Christ. Meaning the day Paul stops imitating Christ. There is no reason for me to imitate Paul. Wow. 
the church did not say amen. amen. He then comes again. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. So I'm not following Paul here. <laughs> I'm following Christ. But because God uses men, Paul now is the one that is helping me navigate my way. But now if I follow Paul's footsteps and I can't see the Christ that I used to see when I started following Paul, there is no need for me to follow Paul. A lot of you have made a mistake and I want to correct it today by the Spirit of God and with all humility. You have followed man and you ended up packing your bags and stayed. Okay. A man of God, a spiritual father, a mentor is a signpost. Is a what? Say that again. Is a what? A if I see a signpost that says 250 kilometers to Atlanta, Georgia, or 250 miles to Atlanta, Georgia, it will be stupidity, ignorance, highest level of ignorance, for me to come out of the bus and pack my bags and say, I've arrived. It is a signpost. Mentors, spiritual fathers are a signpost pointing you to Christ, pointing you to your assignment, pointing you to who God wants you to become because we are all called into your life for different assignments. That's why first time before you met apostle or you met the man of God you are under, there was another man of God that helped you know who Christ is. But as time goes by, now God wants to unlock your gift. He knows for you to know about him, he had to use that man of God. But now to unlock your spiritual senses, he has to send Apostle Mies. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, come on now. Come on now. But now it is it's going to be a problem when Apostle Mies start now pointing you to something else other than Christ. Where, you see, the more you feel like you are, you are distant from God or you are, you are moving away from God, I'm not saying blame the man of God. You need to check the teachings you are feeding in or the man of God who's giving you the word, the type of teachings you are feeding from. Because whoever feeds you guides your convictions. No matter how big a prophet is, no matter how accurate a man of God is, a man of God can be accurate, can be precise, can be, you know, can be a sharpshooter, but that does not give them license to preach garbage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At the end of the day, no matter how big you are, whether they call you general, whether they call you a minor, whether they call you what, we still need to judge your teaching and your preaching in light of the scriptures. If it is not biblical, we don't want it. If it is not in the Bible, we don't want it. Oh, you're not hearing me. Look at you now. I'm sorry to offend you because now I'm dealing with your favorite things that you don't want somebody to deal with. But you know me, Eunice Ivala, it's good to see you. You have been following me for years. I'm not trying to be somebody that I'm not. If you have been following me even for the past 10 years, you will know that he has been singing this song. Are you hearing me? Amen. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the offer and the finisher of our faith. You, you are there looking unto me. Are you mad? Since when did I offer your faith? Since when will I finish your faith? Of course, when I come into your life, I come into your life as a signpost. As somebody that God will use to guide you. Some of you, you have no mentor. You have no spiritual father. You are a spiritual Vasco da Gama. And you are wondering why your spiritual life today is here. Why your spiritual life tomorrow is there. In 2024, have a balance. Have somebody that you call a father. Because that gives you access to their grace. If you don't believe me, ask Paul. He told his sons and daughters and his partners that they are partakers of his grace. Didn't you read it in your Bible? Is it not in the book of Philippians 1? You are partakers of my grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
It's one thing to admire a man. It's another thing to subscribe to the grace of God upon their lives. How do you choose a man of God or how do you know somebody is your spiritual father? When their teachings or their revelation of the word brings you closer to God, awakens you spiritually, points you to who you are by destiny. And you begin to live by the revelation of that man of God. Because every man of God has to have three things. Number one, his gospel. Amen. Oh, I just met somebody up there. What's I? His gospel. We are all men of God, but we, have not the same, we don't have the same gospel. Amen. So every man of God must have, number one, his gospel. So the men of God you follow, you must know their gospel. Yeah. Brother KB, let's go to Timothy before somebody fights me. Because right now, somebody is there like, ah, 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 heresy after heresy. <laughs> Yet it's them. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 8. You, tell, you, you put it there. Give me thumbs up when it's there. Second Timothy. God bless everybody that is giving. I'm getting ready to close. Is it there now? Second Timothy, chapter 2, verses 8. I want to read. Now, let's go. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my what? Gospel. According to my gospel. When we always say it's not enough for you to build the doctrine and the teaching on one scripture, Romans. <laughs> oh, Lord, I didn't want to go here. Look at me now. But it, I think it's important, isn't it? For those who don't know, because if they don't know, then it becomes a problem. Because they don't know. Romans 16, 25, Brother KB. I expect you to know these things. You are a son of major. If he's there, thumbs up. Now to him, that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Hey, this man. Hey, you want to tell me that Paul was humble? He was humble in that humble way, but yeah. <laughs> he says, even when it comes to you being established, it has to be done by my gospel. Ah, baronda. Now, are, are you here? Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? So you see now, so every man of God has to have his gospel. It's in the Bible. That's why Paul and Peter, there was a moment where they disagreed. As a matter of fact, it's not like Paul disagreed with Peter. It was Peter disagreeing with Paul, saying that even the way he writes in the book of Peter, what I'm telling you is in the Bible. Please read your Bible. Even the way he writes, his letters are difficult to understand. They did not really understand where Paul was coming from, where was he going, and what was wrong with Paul. Until later on. Why? Because they were preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was preaching another gospel. And he calls it my gospel. So every man of God has to have his niche, what he's called to preach to people. Amen. If you are a man of God, and when you touch everything that is there, it will take you time to raise disciples. Because you yourself, you don't know what you're called for. That's why we have different types of prophets in different dispensations, called for different assignments. You can't say I'm a prophet. And we ask you, what type of a prophet are you? So I'm just a prophet. Where, did God, where is God sending you? Ah, everywhere. My friend, go down, humble yourself, sit under a prophet, sit under a prophetess, sit under somebody who has what you have and learn from them. And at the right time, you'll be released. Are you with me? So the second thing every man of God must have and you must know about is their grace. So every man of God has his grace, okay? It's in the book of uh, 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 Philippians. You read chapter 1 and you read from verses 5, okay? Paul says, ye are partakers of my grace. Hallelujah. According to the measure of grace. That is Romans chapter 12 and you read from verses 7. It says, according to the measure of grace. So every man of God has his grace. The number three thing is his God. His gospel, his grace, and his God. When you read the Bible in Philippians chapter 4 and you read verses 19, it says, my God, not our God, not their God, my God. 
shall supply all your needs. Not our, but your. I'm not talking about that because that's too deep. So it is important that as you follow a man of God, you have an idea. One say, are we not worshipping the same God? Yes, we are worshipping the same God, but the revelation of the man of God you follow about that same God is different from another man's revelation. Because one will preach to you he's the healer and the other one will say to me he's the deliverer. So you need to know the revelation of God that the man that you follow carries. Amen. That's why if your man of God believes that God cannot heal and you yourself believe that God can heal, you are following a wrong man. If your man of God believes that you are to be poor so that you can receive riches in heaven, and you believe that first John, de uh, third, third John declares that I wish above all things you prosper and be in good health, you know that you are actually destined for greatness in Christ Jesus. You are to be blessed to be a blessing. And your man of God says, all these things are evil. You need no car. You need no house. Just leave. Jesus said, no house. We have mentions in heaven. And you don't believe in that. You are following a wrong man of God. That's why there will be somebody who will believe exactly that the man of God, what the man of God is saying so that they can feel some sort of, uh, you know, uh, a sense of uh, victory even in that situation because they feel like my, my life is not here. I don't care about here. <laughs> ah, you people, you, are, you, you make me laugh. Do you really think almighty God wants you in heaven as fast as you think? We will be evangelizing with guns, brothers and sisters. Receive Christ. I receive Christ. The moment you say, Lord, amen, we shoot you so that you go to heaven. God gave us the ability to heal the sick because he does not want you in heaven as fast as you think he does. Why will we heal the sick? He said, go and heal the sick. Why are we healing them, God, so that they can meet you fast? Ah, come on now. And if you read the Bible, you realize that heaven is not the goal of a child of God. Because when I say goal of a child of God, it's not where we are going to spend eternity. The Bible says he will come down and a new heaven and a new earth. He even saw it in the book of Revelation. John. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the old earth and the new old heaven was destroyed. And he says, we shall reign here on earth. With Christ Jesus for a thousand years. Are you hearing me? And David by his right hand. Come on now. And after that, the devil will be loosed for a little while. And then after that, it will be a final judgment. And then we will live forever and ever and ever. Please read your Bible. It's not me. It's a revelation. So you, you are thinking heaven. Say me, there is mention in heaven. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> you <laughs> you 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 are shocking angels with that revelation of yours you know that we are coming down here you <laughs> i don't blame you though whoever feeds you guides your convictions that's why it is important for you to search the scriptures uh, another woman from USA, she's 91 years now. Send a long message on a video. And when the first thing she said was, God bless you, my son, my prophet, my apostle. I said, like, who is this woman? She looks old, but she looks young. She started telling me for about three minutes on the video about her experience with God. And she said something very powerful. And this really made me emotional. She said, for the past 56 years, I've been looking for the presence of God. She then explained that there was a feeling she felt and her eyes were opened. She has been looking for that feeling. And what? It was the presence of God for about 56 years until she sat down one time on TV, she's busy changing and all of a sudden she sees a video and the video talks about nothing is impossible with God and I don't even know what I was talking about in that she just clicked it five minutes in the video 
the same thing she has been looking for came on her. Her eyes were open. She started speaking in tongues of the spirit. <laughs> she then prayed for me. And she then said to me, I pray that God will keep you humble. Why am I telling you this? And why am I saying this? I'm trying to say to you, yes, we are all men of God. Yes, we are all servants of God. But our assignment in your life is not the same. Mm -hmm. That's why it is important for you when coming to spiritual father, don't joke. There are men whose season is over. There are men whose season is beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because you have a past with me, it doesn't mean you always have a future with me. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of Christians being stuck. Say, ah, me, I have a past. Hey, we have a history. History does not mean future. Some people need to understand, I came from Assembles of God, right? But before Assembles of God, I was in another church called New Creation. In New Creation, when I left, I wrote a letter. As I left, I met with the leaders, the elders, the deacons, and I explained to them, and I wrote a letter to them, and I gave it to them. And they actually, because of the type of a person I was, wrote a letter to transfer me to another church. Can you believe it? Me, when I went to another church, I went with a transfer letter. Where have you seen that? And I went, they gave the leaders of the church a transfer letter. And that letter was saying good things about me. I got in there. Where I was coming from, they had fought the prophetic in me like this. No tomorrow. To an extent that I was told in front of the church, we don't want to hear you prophesy. Are you hearing me? And that is because I was very young and the prophetic in me was just too much. So every time they say pray for the service, I'll end up prophesying. When they say open by prayer, I prophesy. When I'm MC, I'll prophesy. You see what I mean? And it, and, and it was beyond my control. Then when they released me that side, I all thought to myself, here I need to hide. Yet the man of God who came while I was there in that church understood the prophetic. That is the first man of God who called me in front of more, maybe 300 people. And he said, prophesy. And I was wondering to myself, how does he know? And we saw the finger of God. Destinies were redirected. Then the man of God, as time went by, in 2008, going 2009, 2008 or 9, so I then saw Major. And I knew this is my father. I saw Major in the, on TV. I saw him, this is my father. I spoke to my man of God that time. Who was my father at that time? I said, there is a man. My spirit connects with him. And he then said to me, at the right time, you'll meet him. He didn't say, no, forget about that. No, no, he was, he's a great man. He understood, he said, at the right time, you'll meet him. And when I met him, I asked him to release me. He released me nicely. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All I'm trying to show you is that sometimes, just because I have a history with somebody, it does not mean God still wants me with that person. And it is dangerous for us to turn our backs as well on people whose assignment is not yet fulfilled or done in our lives because they release us premature. Have you been in a church where you can't grow anymore? You, it's like you are not growing anymore. There is nothing happening. I need to close now. So you need a spiritual father. What is a spiritual father? Let's quickly answer that. A spiritual father is a covenanted man sent by God, released by God to you to help you manifest that which is in you but not yet born to time. So there is something in you but not born to time. So when a spiritual father comes, he comes to manifest that. So when I father you, Limeri, I don't father your flesh. When I father you, David, I don't father your flesh. When I father you, Nsovo, when I father you, Daniel, I'm not here to father your flesh, your physical appearance, what you can do and what you cannot do. I'm there to father your spirit. So when you begin to follow me as a spiritual father, you don't follow the type of a house I have. You don't follow the type of a car I have. Many people have been misled because of following physical things thinking that just because a man has a house, a man is closer to God. Hey, the devil can give houses. Don't tell me about that. So you begin to follow a man by what he carries in the spirit. 
Because some people, we follow them not for ourselves, but for our generation. I believe Sibongile Zaza is hearing me. Are you hearing me? Say, I hear you, Apostle. 2024, have a man that you say this year, or a woman of God, even the one that you follow. I know some of you, you have, you have churches and they are, you know, spiritually there, right churches. Hold on and follow Christ as your man of God follows Christ. Even if they can come and say, I know Christians don't listen, you won't hear this, but I will say, even if they can come and say, nye and nye about your man of God, about your woman of God, because you have a revelation, don't be shaken. Don't be a man pleaser. Because a lot of people think when a man of God is attacked, that man of God is finished. In no time you will see that man of God, if he's anointed by God, rise like no, no, no one's business. And that is because that, you, you know, it's a school fee we all pay. You can't be great and the enemy is not bothered. If he's not fighting you, you're going, you going the same direction with him. In the kingdom of God, generals are not seen by their stars but they are seen by their scars. We can remove that scripture, uh, Brother KB, I think. Have we removed it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the, Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. I want to see somebody here... Uh, uh, putting hallelujah, praise the Lord, fire emojis. Because I've, I want to say something that will really unlock this year of greatness. Unlock this year of greatness. Remember, we are in our, in our seven days fasting. Today was day two, tomorrow is day three. We are breaking at four. It starts from 8 a.m., 4 p.m., your time. Something is happening in the spirit. We are building capacity. We are building capacity. Are you hearing me? Hiya. We are being capacitated. In this season, don't play with your spiritual life. Because once you get it right in the spirit, in the physical, it automatically manifests. So be intentional. Most importantly, this year serve God. Hallelujah. This year, serve God. Serve God with everything that is in you. Allow the light of Jesus to shine on your face. That when men look at you, they will say, this one, she's a woman of God. You can't be speaking in tongues and swearing at the same time and cursing. Not this year. You, your friends, when you speak in tongues, they don't even take you serious. When you are praying at church, they don't even take you serious. They, they think you're just acting. It's because when you are with them, you are a different person. Not this year. You need five things. Number one is what? God. Number two, destiny help us. Number three, wisdom. Number four, prayer altar. <clears throat> Number five, mentor or spiritual father. That's what you need. And sometimes, people will want to manifest a journey that is going to take them 10 months in 10 days. Leave that. It's a 2023 mentality. Leave it. Elisha followed Elijah, I'm a student of the scripture, for 38 years. Of course, other, believe, other scholars believe it was between 27 to 34 years. It was 38 years. It was not an impartation of three days. Are you hearing me? Amen. The disciples of Jesus followed Jesus for three years until Jesus said, okay, now you are ready and he blew on them. He said, there are so many things that I want to tell you in the book of John, but you will not bear them now. So when we meet a spiritual father or a great man, we must stop this thing of wanting him to take us to a level that he's in because we have not fought battles he has fought. What qualified him to be there is battles. You, you have not fought any battle. I'm not saying you cannot receive impartation. I'm talking about in terms of rank. You have not fought anybody. Nobody has ever said anything about you. Even your cousins, nobody has even, nobody has even fought you. Nobody has even said you are a false Christian. But you want to enter into that rank. Some of us who have been through thick and thin. That's why a lot of people wonder, why do people call you Iron Man Apostle? It's because we have been through it all. 
There is nothing that can be said about me now that was never said. There, there won't be anything new. At the age of 13 and 14, 13 and 14, can you believe it? 13 and 14, I was persecuted at school. They called me all names. Imagine I was 13. Do you think at this point in time, if you say something about me, it will move me? It's impossible, isn't it? Yeah. At the age of 13, I was still young and I was very emotional. I was suspended at school for three weeks. At school. Because when I entered, people were falling under the power of God. And the teachers concluded, this boy has a spirit. And this spirit, we don't need it in this school. They suspended me. They told my mother, when he comes back with this, we won't accept him. Why? Because parents were reporting at school. Somebody doesn't understand. Parents were reporting. I will enter like this. People will fall and demons will manifest. People will roll and they will go home dirty. White shirt, dirty. Skirts, dirty. Trousers, dirty. They were rolling on the ground. Then parents were like, we send our children clean. They come back dirty. We hear there is a young man when he walks, people fall. He has something. They suspended me for three weeks. What are you talking about? And I came back. I was praying in my heart, God, let this thing not happen. And as I entered, I remember there were believers at that time. When they saw me, ah, they started screaming. They were excited now that, ah, he's back. Apostle is back. Of course, that time I was not an apostle. But they used to call me man of God. The man of God is back. And as I entered my class, I was just praying, God, I don't want no trouble. And I sat down. During break time, we were praying at the back. As we were praying with a group of believers, because we used to gather during break time, as we were praying and we were ministering, about four guys were coming to make fun of us. One of them, the power of God hit him, started vomiting until he vomited blood. And they called me again, they set me down. The principal was very rude. He never supported any, any person who prayed. They, he never wanted to even give them a class to gather. He called me. He said, I don't know, but there's something about you. From next week, use the, the main hall of the church to preach in this school. And me and that principal, we were like this. And from that day, nobody troubled me. <laughs> I'm telling you now. So you think today somebody can say something. Like seriously, I know my stand with God. I know the one who has called me. Unless I decide to turn my back. Because there are people who turn their back from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That's why I told you that the first thing that you know, mm -mm, something is wrong. When I start preaching something else, not Jesus. Secondly, when I start preaching men of God. When I start standing here, talk to you about another man of God. That day, know something is wrong with this guy now. If I have the word of God, why should I preach another man of God? Do you think God can call me to preach another man of God to you? Do you really think that's God's assignment for me to preach another man of God to you? Another woman of God to you? What they do, how they do what they do. Do you, do you really think it can be God? So you, it means I'm undermining the discernment that is in you. To tell you who's false and who's true. It means I know you don't have the Holy Spirit. And that is because me, I've pointed you to myself. Hence I know you depend on what I say. Seriously, if you have to hear me to know who's false, you are the problem. You see, all of them, I've got over 5,000 people, all of them, they are silent. All of them, they're watching, they're like, I'm not trying to hurt you, I'm trying to help you. It's 2024, it's all about God, it's all about Jesus. It's Jesus or nothing. Give me Jesus or excuse me. Give me the wisdom of God or excuse me. Listen, I'm not out of good news. I'm just out of time. This is our year of what? Greatness. So if you're not there, 2024 is your year of greatness. And as somebody who's part of our ministry... Last year, it was our year of flourishing. Uh, God bless everybody that is giving. We can use the, 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 the platforms that are on our screen uh, to honor God with our substance and bless God with what we have and offer. Use the details. I see them there on the screen. Last year, it was a year, our year of flourishing. This year is our year of greatness. 
So last year when we greet when one greeted you or if somebody comes and say how are you you say I'm flourishing and making progress. But this year when they say how are you you say I'm great and I'm excellent. Yeah. When they say how are you if you don't want to go I'm great and I'm excellent you go I'm excellent. Ah yeah. How are you I'm great. This thing of how are you I'm trying never. It must not be in your vocab. How are you? I'm getting better. Getting better where? You. This is your year of greatness. You are great in and out of season. Your children are great. Your husband is great. Everything you do shall be great. And the greatness of God shall be made manifest through you. This year you have two choices. Only two choices. Upwards and forward only. Say, I hear, you, I hear you, Apostle. Upwards and what? And forward, forward only. You are excellent. God bless everybody that is giving. You are excellent. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord. And remember, Thanksgiving is the only doorway to multiplication this year. Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciation is qualification for multiplication. Remember that, right? Amen. Nothing finishes in the hands of a thanksgiver. Thanksgiving is more to anything. As long as you can think, you can thank. Remember that. Hallelujah. The Lord. And you will see God move you. And one more thing I have, I'm excited to announce that this Sunday, our service will be online. Uh, it will start at, uh, I believe, 10 a.m. Please watch out. Be in that service. And the reason being is because there's going to be so much that will take place. I'm talking about activities. So much will happen on that Sunday, right? So you need, it will be online, but you need to be part of it. Uh, we, you know, we are going to also open a doorway for our new online members you know, uh, to join the year 2024 and you go through the membership class. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. And from there, you move from one level to another and then you get into training the trainer so that you know the word of God yourself and you know how to serve God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But a lot is going to happen this year. I'm excited about it. Amen. So wherever you are, always remember, that Jesus is the reason for this season and Jesus is the reason for this time. Amen. On the, thank you, thank you. On the 27th, thank you for reminding me. On the 27th of March, we have, pay attention to this, we have our prophetic retreat. Amen. Prophetic retreat 2024. Amen. My goodness. In South Africa, it's going to be three days, going to four days. Ayah, ayah, ayah. People have registered. People are still registering. If you have not registered, you can still secure your space right now. You can register and be here in South Africa. It's going to be something else. The prophetic retreat, I'm telling you, this year will be a heavy hitter. Last year, it was on another level. The only problem we have, especially with USA people, none of them wanted to go back home last year. I'm serious. Other countries, well, people were like, okay, bye-bye, Apostle. Thank you so much. And we had India and a little bit of Denmark, never wanted to go home. All USA stayed, stayed, said, we're not going home. I even have my son right now, who's in South Africa, is watching. His name is David Freeman. He's in South Africa. He was here for the crossover. He sent me a message today. He said, I don't know if I'll go home. Didn't I tell you? His wife left already. She has to go get some few things ready. Him, he said, I don't know if I'll go home. Uh, Lee Mary, she was here in South Africa from USA. There she is there. She will tell you the feeling of being here. Right? And a lot of people were here. They will tell you, no. So you can't miss the prophetic retreat. Three days with Apostle Mizim, Zwaket and Credit. In one place, one house, one environment. Uh, 
So we're going to different places. Uh, you know, it's just going to be a beautiful experience. So you have to be there. Check out also for our pictures for our last year retreat. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. So you are invited. Go and register. Go and sign up. And I'm excited to also announce that the first week of February, somebody say first week of February. I believe the team gave me dates. Let me give you the dates very quick. Uh, let me give you the dates. Where is that WhatsApp now? Uh, February, February, February. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the 2nd and the 3rd of February, we are going to have our first school of ministry. 2024. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You better be excited about that. So you better be excited about that. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you all know, it's called uh, School of the Chosen. So you need to be there, whether you are prophetic, whether you are apostolic, whether you are, it doesn't matter, you need to be there. Amen. Glory be to God. Once you see the poster, you know space fill, fill, fill up when it comes to that one. When you see a poster, you run, you sign up, and then you know you are done. 2024 is our year of greatness. May God raise you up like a horn of a unicorn, and may you become the testimony of his glory. Apostle Mies, Mzwaket and Kredi, signing out and saying, God bless everybody. God bless everybody. Oh, grand opening. Thank you. Grand opening is uh, on the 14th, right? Amen. So on the 14th of January, we are opening physically the service. So if you are anywhere in South Africa, Botswana, Zambia, Namibia, Anywhere close or you can come from far, be on the grand opening. Amen. Because you have to be there when we do our first Sunday service of the year. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless everybody. The Lord spoke to me and said to me, the year.